All right, you guys, here's the deal. We're not proud of this piece completely, fully, or at all, but making it was always fun. We experimented, found out some new techniques that we're gonna use in future pieces, and we, the point of test pieces ultimately is to figure out what you like, what you don't like, what works, what doesn't work, and then utilize that in sellable artwork. That being said, please enjoy this piece not working out twice. We're still gonna redo it, but we haven't done it yet, but I wanted to post something other than pro tips for you guys to enjoy. So here it is. Hope you enjoyed your Sunday. Have an amazing weekend. I'll probably be painting, probably, probably be painting through part of the Super Bowl tomorrow because yeah, it's what we do. Anyways, shenanigans and enjoy. So this is a test piece for a client that wanted teal base with browns, a dark brown, and then white and... It's gotta be like, that's perfect for that. I think so too, it looks like it. They wanted um, a rose gold or gold and a dark brown and white. But in order to not make the colors muddy up, because if you use too many colors with resin, especially on a smaller piece, sometimes it gets a little bit too busy or the colors that you wanna be more dominant get lost. So we're basing it in the blue because they wanted um, his, what's it, what is it? Well, the, their island is, he wanted the island to be like, kind of like an art piece because he's going to be filming his food prep and cooking and his plating and all that food stuff. So he wanted it to be a little bit different, almost like a piece of art more than the countertops. So. He wanted it to be a little bit more flashy, flashy or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so we thought if we painted the base teal, used a little bit of clear, less white, then the teal would show through. We could put the brown in there and it wouldn't muddy up with, with the teals as well. You could still see the teal on the bottom. Right? Yeah. Well, usually we will base out with spray paint. We don't want to do that with this because we want it to be true to the color that we're going to use in his house. And since he does a lot of food stuff, we don't want to use spray paint. Still, using spray paint in somebody's home is not a good idea to solid the... Maybe in the summertime when you can open the door. Mm -hmm. So we're basing it in Craft Smart. Turquoise. It's going to be the color of his logo, or his logo is that color. How does it look with the light? I don't know if you can see that light. 
I think it looks good. Low, oh yeah, a little lower, you're good. So just like we do with the canvases, we like to put push pins in the bottom corners. So that there's a base we can easily pick up and set down our working surface. And when we put it away for it to set up, it won't stick to whatever we set it on. This makes life easier. With a canvas, it's easier if you aim for where the two guys mm, meet. Let me do this one. Like right in this no, it's, point. And it's easier to. Oh, these are gonna be off. And a hammer? No. And put these in before you put the tape on because if you put the tape down first, and you stick these in there, you're not gonna be able to pull your tape up. It's gonna rip, tear, or it's gonna be real messy. You don't want that. So, you want to put your tape down, and you can just cut it. You always stay in this overlapping the same direction as well. So don't like tape that one and then tape this one. Tape it in succession. Also, we're gonna use an airbrush today to move some resin around. You can use a straw in your mouth, but Odds of passing out are greater. Now, why did you pull this up? Um, so that when you start, when you take, when you start peeling it, you're not grabbing this one. You, you could just, and then it takes it all the way around. I would never have thought of that. My brain looks like this. It's healing. I think you're always going to be able to see it though. It's going to be forever there. Anyways, we're using an X-Acto blade to cut off the excess all the way around. You could use a box cutter. And lastly, you could use scissors, but that's going to be harder to get a really close cut. You can get an X-Acto blade from any craft store ever, any one of them, or a box cutter from any hardware store. What else is new? Um, we're doing a lot of countertops lately. We had to finish up a lot of actual paintings because we have a show in Deep Ellum right now. It's a group show, collaborative show. I don't know, it's a show. And so we got those out of the way and we've been compiling other videos Make sure your surface is level, especially if you use the push pin trick. Because if you push one not as much in as another one, obviously it's going to be off some. You just do the other side of it. We've gotten a lot of use out of our level, so it's not level anymore. So you have to get little resin drips off of it. Oh, 
resin is nice and flowy since we heated it up with the warm water. We're using an all-purpose mixing container that shows the ratios. You can also weigh it with like a food scale. I've seen people do that. Maybe we'll try that eventually. So while he is doing the measurements and mathing, I'm going to go over our colors for today's video. This is a rose gold spray paint. It's metallic, which is the important thing. The Rust-Oleum doesn't have a rose gold, so we're using Design Master. We've used it in a couple other things. We're also using... We're also using an ink by Doc Martin. This is a metallic ink or an iridescent in the shade Nickel. It leaves like a glittery metallic tint. We also used it in um, the first counters in Alabama, the white and teal and gold. No, yeah. And you, you can see the slight hints that this leaves. We're also incorporating. It a, makes so much faster when it's like when it's out. up to he, like heated. When you like have it, it's crazy. Everything about warming up resin is great, except for you really want to make sure you don't push it all the way to the edge when it's this thin, because it's all going to run off your surface. You're just going to waste a bunch of resin. We're also using an acrylic brown by Amsterdam in the color Van Dyke and our go-to white by Art District. It's also an acrylic, it's titanium white. This is what the rose gold looks like. Make sure you shake your spray paint thoroughly and completely a lot, especially if it's colder because can you tell science to spray paint about why cold spray paint you have to shake it up a lot? Well, it just it just gets really thin and it runs easy and it's just not mixed. You've been sprayed a little bit before you spray it into your cup or you'll just get a really uh, not consistent spray paint. Particularly with metallic. So we found out the hard way after we'd already applied it to a countertop that we needed to go back and add a different Add more of it because we didn't shake it up all the way. It looks kind of chunky, gritty. It looks gritty. Whereas if you do it, shake it up enough, it looks real smooth and oily like this. Also, Sorry. use plastic cup because if you spray it into styrofoam or plastic, it's going to eat it and you're going to spill paint and resin everywhere. It's not a fun time. When you spray it into a paper cup, bend the end of it or the side of it in a little bit so that it has somewhere to hit so it doesn't splash back in your face. That's not fun either. When you use um, acrylics in your resin, it doesn't take a lot. Just a couple dabs will do ya. You can always add more. You can't take it away. You can use any means to spread your resin around. On bigger surfaces, we'll use a trowel. On smaller surfaces, we'll use whatever stirring apparatus. Nope, utensil that <coughs> we've been using.
but honestly, one of my favorite tools to move resin is my hands. Thought about leaving in the center of it so that it, uh, see where you're pissing in that gold. Now you left some spaces open on purpose. Client wanted a more artistic feel to this piece, so it's not really going to be marbly, but it is going to be, it's going to have a marble aspect to it for sure. When you put heat on a piece, you can use a heat gun, a torch. If you have a blow dryer that gets really hot, you use that too. The purpose is to pop little air bubbles that come up from when you mix your resin together. Which, less air, pop air, popples, air bubbles come up when you heat up your resin before you mix your two parts. It looks very like sky. Mm -hmm. Should we add more white? No. We wanted it to be more artistic, so I think. Just like picks up all of it. Well, we stay true to the live artwork, and if it doesn't work out, we show them. So, usually, we use a little blue and yellow roller from Hobby Lobby or Michael's. All we had is a bigger one and it soaked up, as you can see, a lot of our resin. So, we gotta roll with the punches on this one. Maybe we'll like it, maybe we won't. first so it gets all our all in there mm -hmm. and then it gives it that you know the sparkly hint if we do a roller over this the brown is just going to cover it all up all right so let's just blow it around and see how like a bunch more white like the thicker you know like the opaque just to put in certain like puddles 
So it gives it that little, like, I guess I think of it as a little island, and then there's, it goes from real shallow to deep. It's a little wide. It just looks different. I'm going to put the uh, curl, or that. You know what's funny is I think that this cold air, it like breaks it up. It doesn't heat it up, so it's not trying to set. That's what I love. I love the little, like when you hit it next to it, it gives it a little, like it breaks it up, like a current. a little bit of resin into the spray paint and if we mix it into the, the like just a little bit it it almost it gets with it and then it just kind of puts it under it or it gives it a little layer you can do this on the top it just looks like it literally like there's no there's no seam it looks so good, like it looks like it's in it, but I'm pretty sure it's on top of it. We never went over the sides. So that piece didn't turn out quite like we had planned. So we're going to buff it out and redo it. There are often times where we just don't even want to mess with something as a base, so we'll just wipe it out and start over. So that's what happened. Continue. Action. Hello everyone in YouTube land. Today we're making a new, today we're making a new test piece. Did a previous test piece that we absolutely hated. So we're going a different route. We're starting over. And this is the video making of our starting over. So if you've watched any of our videos before, you know that I harp on making sure that you mix your resin evenly and equally. Every single video you say that. But what if someone's watching it for the first time and they don't and know you it? you say, well, you just have to look for the video right here. Doink, doink, doink. No. Oh. And then you can make a, some of those little funny sounds where it goes doink, doink, doink. Can I make it a doink, doink, doink? By the way, I'm all the way up here, you guys. I'm standing on a this. 
Let me not fall while filming. Oh, my way down. So notice that everywhere in our studio has this black tarpy stuff. This is why nothing sticks to it. It's basically magic. Pro tip. Pro tip, make your whole place <clears throat> like Dexter's gonna do work in it. Do we have enough paints? Also, if you haven't checked out our social media, Facebook, Insta, and email us if you have any questions or if you want to show us your work, we would love to see it, especially if you have questions about a piece you're working on in particular. We don't charge for our information or tips or anything like that we're just happy to help i mean unless you want to throw a dollar at us that sounded real strippery so this is a pine or birch i can't remember board wood canvas I guess because it's framed in the back and we got it from an art store what is the name of it that one was Aaron Brothers right this is Aaron Brothers yeah it's an 18 by 24 and then we spray painted it white that is mixed very thin I put some heat in there so it should be cool Make sure it's super mixed in, because remember? I did. If you heat your resin, and you mix an acrylic paint into it, you, you need to make extra special sure that your paint mixes in all the way, because you'll end up with chunks. And that's not fun, because then you have to mix it in with your hand on your project. So he's just spreading out the resin over the surface. The white we're using is by Art District. It's an acrylic medium body in titanium white. Our resin is in Virotex Light because it's waterproof heat and alcohol resistant and it's FDA approved since we're going to be using it for countertops. Here's one of the blues we're probably maybe going to use. It is a greenish blue number 557 from Amsterdam. Are we going to use all these? No. I just got those out for something else. It's not for. Oh. Whichever ones we decide to use, I'll tell you all the colors. This is nickel. It's by Doc Martin. It's an iridescent. Super pretty when it's mixed all together. We mix that stuff. Mix it up. I guess I'm gonna put everybody back in the, this. Kind of leveling this out, just kind of getting it an even coat. Um, and also, we learned that you cannot use a very dense foam brush while doing marble veins. Um, the way we do our veins is with a, uh, a foam roller. <clears throat> You'll have to excuse me, I'm sick, so if I cough or sneeze or clear my throat. Um, so this way you're pretty much just spreading it out evenly. 
and you're soaking some of the resin into this so that when I pour the nickel down, I can just go right over it and it, it's not taking up everything I put down. So, Is this the teal you want to use? Uh, yes. So the teal we're using is Peacock Focus. Focus. It's by Deco Art. It's acrylic. I don't think it has a number on it, but that's what it is. Doesn't take much. Using this much. I, mean, I want to do. I want to do all these. I want to do them in one. I, that one we did. It was like crazy lines. I don't know what I was doing. It was like a beginner. This client wanted a predominantly blue or teal artistic piece, not so much marble, but we're doing the rest of his countertops in a similar style, but it is marble. So we're gonna have to make an artistic marble out of this one. Or a play on marble, I guess. You, what we do is you just go over this. You can go on the outside, but you just try to follow it. You know, you're just basically smashing it in. You're, you're, you're just kind of making almost like a, like a marble effect with the roller. Just picking it up, putting it down. Distributing it. Moving it out. This will be a good example. Like that looks so amazing. And then see some of it will be on there so it'll catch it and distribute it in other places real light. Yeah. Those little waves that you see left in the resin, those will melt back into itself as soon as we add heat onto it. I was gonna say pull that one back up just a little bit. We have an abrupt stop there. Well, there's. I'm gonna do. Oh uh, yeah. We're doing other colors yeah, too. I'm gonna do that brown. But that's for everybody that's asked about how we achieve our marble look. Super easy. That little roller came from Michaels for two dollars and forty-seven cents. The brown we're using, Espresso by Craftsmart. Blowing on it with a straw helps to clean up lines sometimes or to narrow the vein if you want to like push it back or, into itself. Or break it up. Like you could break it up so it, like and it'll break up but it'll give you a, a kind of like a hard edge and then go into the breakup so it looks very natural. Back to the roller.
See that? You can make a, a hard edge. what our rose gold looks like. Very pretty, very metallic. just these colors just don't go together at all. You know, it goes over that. It goes over what? The teal? Uh huh. Like that when that teal and the rose gold mix. Mm -hmm. Well, I might as well. I love the, the nickel. Spray that in there. Oh. You're pushing it out. It'll just make it, it'll make it cuter. Cuter? Yeah. Again, 
up. What do you want to do? Tilt it around in a circle. Like, I bet a meteorologist would buy that. Storm Lucy on the horizon. Coming in lukewarm. That looks like it might be coming in a little hot. You need to like loosen up this, it'll spread out more. <laughs> well, if there's any meteorologists out there that would like to purchase this, it is for sale. This is a northwestern shift headed off the gulf of the Pacific Electric Avenue. Eddie Money? No, not Eddie Money. You know, 80s music. This here's lightning in this specific area. The Pacific Coast. I say we got a winner. I say we came up with something a little bit. We can do. You should see this from that side. I can see it. It's the gold stuff. The gold rush of 1904. Back when gold was Russian. Pink. It was rose color. color. Yeah. Can you guys see that? So yeah, that's how that's how that turned out. So we did learn some things. We got a we, yeah, we got a piece out of it that we're gonna end up probably buffing out and trying again for the third time. Just like the glitter table. Sometimes it takes a few tries, but we always like to post our successes and failures just so that no artist out there thinks that mistakes don't happen no matter how long you've been working with a medium how long you've been arting whatever not every time's perfect and we're not perfect and we like to put all, all of it out there for you guys so there's that let's go see what it looks like now that it is completely set there are some pretty parts like these cells that popped up from Focus, mixing the rose into that, um, is it Van Dyke brown? I don't know, the last brown that we used. So that turned out nice. This still looks like chocolate, caramel, and mint waves. Maybe some kind of funky coral, but the selling is undeniable. Turned out really nicely in many areas. And take a picture of that. I think I like the cells with the solid hard line of green through them. There's the tropical storm twisty do that Jeff made. That's what it looks like when you just spray gold on it and work it around in a circle it turns into I don't know if you can see that very visually interesting it did end up flattening out even so I didn't think that would do that since we had worked it for so long what else do we have on this piece gold separating out of the chocolate ultimately not our favorite piece <laughs> so bad but 
You live, you learn, you work with what you have, and then you wake up the next day and do it again. So, thank you for watching, tuning in, commenting, focus, and everything that you guys do for our channel. We really appreciate every single one of you. See y'all in the next video.